Alright guys, so about four weeks ago, I picked up the Fujifilm X-T2 for the purpose of shooting 4K video and also because I'm really into shooting stills. Um, yeah, I mean, the stills on this camera are amazing. Uh, I knew that because I'd read all the reviews about it. So um, I went and picked up this camera and I've been using it for, yeah, about four, three or four weeks now, um, just putting it through its paces. And I've got to say, I really enjoy shooting 4K with this camera. In fact, I actually went out and bought two. So uh, the camera that's recording me right now is the X-T2 as well. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd do a little bit of a review on this camera, um, go through all the things that I like about it and all the things that I don't like about it and that could be improved, um, as well as explain, I guess, why I chose this camera. So yeah, let's get into it. can record 4K up to 30p and 1080 up to 60p. And for 4K, it actually captures the full 5K resolution of the sensor and then downscales that to a 4K image. And I think for the 1080p, it actually um, records a 3K image and then down converts that to the 1080p image. So the X-T2 has a 100 megabit codec and that um, is basically across all of the formats. So no matter you're shooting um, 4K 30, 4K 24, even 1080 at 24, 30, or 50 or 60, it's gonna have, it's gonna aim for that 100 megabits per second um, data rate. So one additional thing to note about the 4K on the X-T2 is that it does have an additional crop, which I think makes the total crop on, on, um, on a full frame uh, about 1.75 I'm fairly certain so you just have to take that into account when you're picking up lenses for the X-T2 um, If you choose to pick up an X-T2, I would highly recommend getting the battery grip um, So not only does the battery grip allow you to store an extra two batteries inside the camera um, And also give it like a lot more heft a lot more weight a more solid feeling to the camera um, you know, it's not as jittery when you're hand holding and stuff like that. Um, but it actually extends the recording time limit from 10 minutes internally to 30 minutes. Um, so for what I do, um, you know, lots of weddings, uh, lots of events and um, interviews and stuff like that, I definitely need um, a camera that can record for longer than 10 minutes at a time. Um, I remember having the 5D Mark II and it only recording for 12 and a half minutes at a time and that was a real headache back in the day so um, yeah definitely wouldn't recommend going without the battery grip. It does also add a headphone jack on the side and one of the coolest things about this battery grip is that you can actually detach it from the camera and then plug the uh, power socket that comes with the grip and you can actually charge the batteries inside the grip come back, reattach the grip to the camera, and you're pretty much ready to go again. So actually, when I get home from a shoot, what I do is I, I basically just set the camera down, I plug in the uh, power cable, and I also plug in the cable to the actual body itself. And that actually allows me to charge all three batteries in the camera um, overnight, and then I basically just pick it up the next day and I'm ready to shoot again. So that's really awesome. So with the previous cameras that um, I've used, you have to actually take all the batteries out, put them on their respective chargers, um, come back, you know, take them off and, and reload them in again. So that's really cool that you can actually just quickly, you know, recharge. So probably my favorite feature and one of the biggest reasons why I bought an X-T2 um, is the color. I saw some footage online um, of the X-T2 in action and I just instantly thought, wow, this is the first camera that I've seen apart from the Canon cameras. Um, and obviously you like your higher end cameras like the Red and Alexa and all that kind of thing that really reproduces color beautifully. 
Um, I think it's one thing to reproduce color accurately, um, but another thing to reproduce color in a really beautiful uh, stylistic way. And I think that for years, Canon has kind of had a monopoly in the consumer video um, sector. So that's probably one of the main reasons why I picked up this camera in the first place. And then everything else that I've discovered about it, I guess, um, from there is a bit of a bonus. My favorite picture style so far is actually classic chrome. I think the thing that I like about it the most is it doesn't have too much saturation in the shadows and in the highlights. It's very neutral um, whilst giving a good amount of saturation in the midtones. And when you reduce the shadow um, and highlight tone um, in the menu, um, so you can actually customize these, you know, film presets. They're not just basically bang that that's it. Um, you can adjust the highlight and shadow. So I recommend. Um, doing negative two shadows, negative two highlights, negative four color and negative four sharpness. So that's basically everything turned down to um, its minimum. I know that's pretty common for people to recommend shooting with a flatter picture style. Um, to be honest, that's actually what just really looks good straight out of the camera to me, to my eyes. Like I would use that negative four, um, you know, highlight negative four shadow. I would actually use that as my final output. I may add a little bit more saturation in in post, but as far as it, that picture style with those settings, I think it's like pretty much bang on what I like. So another thing that I really love about this camera is that all of the buttons and dials on the back are remappable. So I've got my left button um, on the this D-pad um, set to change the film simulation, the right button to change the white balance, and the up button to change the mic uh, level, so adjust the mic level. Um, and then I've actually set this dial to the ISO control, so I control the ISO not with this top dial but with this front front dial and then the back dial actually um, I think that's default as well but that changes my shutter speed so between the lens with the aperture control my front finger and my back finger I can basically control all three uh, shutter speed aperture and ISO with one hand which is really awesome so when you're bringing three full size, let's say like 1D bodies um, around with you, as well as all the lenses, all the equipment, um, it can get really, really heavy. And what I really love about the Fuji X-T2 um, and the Fuji X series of lenses is that it's very compact, very lightweight. Um, and you know, it you can easily carry around three bodies in the same bag that you would essentially only be able to fit one, let's say, Canon one series body. Um, another really important thing for me is being able to balance it on a gimbal. So I actually took this camera out. The first wedding that I shot with the X-T2, I had a Zion crane and balancing um, the camera on the crane was just so easy. Um, it didn't have any of those crazy micro jitters that you see, you know, on a, on a smaller handheld gimbal um, that come with, you know, having maybe a camera that's pushing on the weight limit a little bit. So it's really awesome to know that this uh, X-T2 works beautifully with um, the awesome gimbal, the Zion Crane. So another thing that I really love about the X-T2 is the codec that it records to. Um, it's not too heavy like uh, when I owned the 5D Mark IV, um, it was just crazy how much uh, space that 4K image took up at 500 megabits. So at 100 megabits, the X-T2 is actually a really happy medium. And what I found in post is that 
um, it doesn't really fall apart with too much grading. So you can actually drop this, the contrast, um, increase the saturation, um, push and pull in any way. And it does, it's actually holds up really, really well. So I'm super happy with, um, I guess, the trade-off between size and workability in post. A huge plus for the Fuji X-C2 is the lens system. I just really love the quality of these lenses. The first lens I got was actually the 23 millimeter 1.4 and 35 millimeters is like my favorite full frame focal length. So the 23 millimeter, um, it basically hits around 35. Yeah, it's actually like really light for a 1.4 lens. Um, it's super sharp, wide open. Um, and then the second lens that I got was the Fujifilm uh, 56 1.2. So this works out to be like a 85 equi equivalent. And I actually picked up a Fuji X mount to Canon EF mount adapter. Um, now this is just like a dumb adapter, so it doesn't have any electrical contacts. So you can't actually change the aperture on the electronic EF lenses, but I do have a couple of manual EF lenses, um, like the Samyang 135F2, which works really, really well on the X-T2. So this might be surprising that this is like one of the features that I really love about this camera, but it actually tells you how much recording you have left on each SD card. Um, which is something that I really enjoyed when I was shooting with the Nikon cameras back when I had like a Nikon D800 and D600 that I really missed when I picked up the 5D Mark III. Um, with the 5D, I never knew how much time I had left on the card. And when I was shooting weddings, like doing the speeches and the ceremony, that was a little bit like concerning for me at times. So I wanna go into some of the things that I really don't like about this camera, believe it or not, actually. Um, don't love everything about this camera even though it's been great so far and I've actually bought two of them um, and a number of lenses. There are some things that really annoy me that I wish just uh, weren't a thing basically. Um, the first one is the battery grip and the order at which it runs through the batteries. It actually uses one battery at a time. Instead of draining from all three batteries at once, it starts with the left battery uh, then it drains the right battery, then it drains the internal battery. And while that might not sound really that bad, um, basically what happens is that every time one of these batteries runs to flat, it actually stops recording. So you'll have to come back to the camera if it's recording, you know, continuously and actually re-record again, which is a bit of a pain because if you've got one battery that's like almost dead, so if you want to go and get like another angle, say you're shooting a wedding, you, you won't really know if the camera is recording or not, especially if that low battery indicator is flashing. So that's one really annoying thing that um, I wish wasn't um, the case with this camera. Um, another annoying thing that I found is that once one of the cards gets filled on the X-T2, you actually have to go into the menu um, and there's it's like a few options deep to actually switch over the video recording to the second slot. There's no quick shortcut that I know of that you can actually change um, card slots that you're recording to. So that's a little bit frustrating too. There is no option to punch in while recording on this camera, which is um, also a bit of a bummer. Although it's really easy to punch in before you start recording, you just hit the same dial that you use um, to control the shutter speed at, at the back here. So you just tap that and it'll zoom in and then you can scroll left and right to zoom even further in and out, which is, um, that's cool. But I wish you could uh, punch in while recording. That would be um, much better. I didn't actually mind in the beginning that um, the camera doesn't have a touch screen. Um, but then when I actually realized that the continuous autofocus is actually quite good. I actually wasn't expecting it to be any good at all. Um, I didn't really have that high expectations for this camera when I picked it up. Um, originally, I was only gonna use this camera for stills and maybe a little bit of video here and there. But then when I realized like what a good video camera it is, I was like, and, and, and how good the continuous autofocus is, I was like, man, if they had put a touch screen on this camera to be able to select, you know, the focus point while you're recording, um, it would actually be really awesome. I don't know whether this is an issue that exists with all the Fuji lenses or just the 56 1.2 that I tested. Um, but if you're tracking a subject, it can be like a little bit, um, I don't know, what's the word? Like jumpy. Um, 
So I'll play you guys a clip so you can see and I'll actually zoom in on the background so you can actually see like the focus changing in kind of like more of a jumpy kind of manner, not like a smooth transition between, you know, infinity and then uh, when the subject comes closer. So this is kind of a con, but it's also kind of my fault. Um, the batteries are really expensive um, and, and the battery grip is also very expensive. So I actually went out and I bought these aftermarket um, batteries. So I bought a whole bunch of these extremely cheap um, Wasabi power batteries. Um, they're not that great. I mean, compared to the Fuji uh, batteries, they last almost as long, not quite as long. Um, but I think the most frustrating thing about these aftermarket batteries, even though they're so much cheaper, is that when they get to like halfway, so like two out of four bars um, on the display, they actually drain really, really quickly. So you might go over and check the camera and be like, oh, okay, cool, I've still got a little bit of battery left and then come back like two minutes later and the whole thing is just drained, it's dead. Um, so I wouldn't recommend picking up any of the third party batteries for this camera. I'd probably recommend just going genuine. Um, but if you are shooting stills, it doesn't matter as much. So I'm gonna hang on to my batteries. I'm not gonna get rid of them or throw them out. I'm just gonna use them as emergency spares. Um, you know, if I ever get into trouble. And obviously I think they're still good for shooting stills. I think it's just the video that, um, you know, gets a little bit annoying that they just run really flat, really, really quickly. The Fuji has a lot of uh, pros and cons um, and it's definitely not perfect for everyone, but for what I'm doing, you know, lots of um, weddings and stuff like that, I think it's just like a really, um, great system in that it's compact, has awesome lenses, you know, all the reasons that I already went through. Um, and I'm just really enjoying shooting with it. Like it's just a really good user experience. And I think when I go traveling with the camera, um, it's going to be really good, um, very light camera just to kind of run around, document, maybe even do some like vlog style shooting, even though I'm not like super into that at this stage. From a stills point of view as well, it's just a phenomenal stills camera. I mean, like you can go and watch all the reviews about, um, glowing reviews about um, Fuji uh, X series and how amazing their sensor technology is, um, how amazing, you know, the dynamic range and the noise performance and all that kind of stuff is on this camera. also did a low light ISO test. So I cut all the lights and then I basically set up a scene and just increased the ISO all the way up to 12,800, which is what this camera goes to. Um, personally, I probably wouldn't use it past 3200 ISO, but I mean, in certain situations, like you have to go higher and you can always use noise reduction. So um, at a wedding recently, I went up to 5,000 ISO. I didn't really have to go that high. I, I probably could have just used, you know, a wider aperture lens to actually get gather more light and not have to go that, that high. But I really just wanted to test out what the camera would look like, you know, in a real life situation above ISO 3200 and didn't do too bad. So that pretty much wraps up my video review of the Fuji X-T2. Um, really hope you enjoyed it. As always, I've linked all the equipment that I used on this review in the description below, including what I used to shoot this video right here. Um, so you guys can go and check out those links. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.